for rats in. Um, we do have a program, uh, a social media thing called Slack, and we can put it on Slack and find people who actually do do the Norway rats. Um, but we don't at Wild Care um, take care of them. We try to farm them out to someone who will. They are considered invasive, and we we take care of so many so many animals. We try to um, limit it to uh, you know somehow. Okay, and Bill asks, Bill says, we kept moving a blink camera around the perimeter of our house, around the foundation, and eventually that helped us to determine how the mice are getting in. That is uh, a great idea. Cameras are great. Um, Bill, I love that. If any of you have like Arlo or blink or ring, you can do that. And also if you take a UV light, you can look, I did this in my apartment, and their runways, um, their pee will be fluorescent under a black light, like $10, $10 black light flashlight um, at the hardware store. So let's see how this term, how mice were getting in. I also discovered that mice, if you put cameras, if they're coming in your house and they are coming into the foundation and perhaps in your basement, instead of like putting cameras down on the floor of your basement, if you put them up on the ceiling, you may see a lot more activity. Oh yeah. Because of the wires and the runways that are all up there and the holes that will lead into the floors. That makes so much sense. Okay, another question we have, Bill, do you have any good links or apps for baby squirrel distress calls? I was told that this is a good way to help reunite babies with their mom. I would just Google baby squirrel distress call, and I'm sure you'd find it. Um, we have recorded some ourselves just because we've had them. And when we go and reunite squirrels, uh, we have played them um, very successfully to, um, right. to the mothers. And we had this great reuniting last year with, with Sarah, um, oh, where yeah. people had found uh, gray squirrels in a car engine in like a condo complex. And uh, I, th I think the mother came and got a couple, but then there were some more that, that didn't get gotten. Um, we kept them overnight and we sent a volunteer there who had hours to spend, thank goodness, but it was um, very exciting for her. It was the first reuniting that she'd ever been to. She went there and parked her car in front of the tree where people had said they'd seen the mother go with the babies that she had taken because she had in fact had several nests. And, um, Sarah played the, the, the screaming baby sounds, which sound like this, they go, <laughs> and then they stop. So it's like, it's pretty much just like that. Um, she had put the box of the squirrels that we had at the bottom of the tree where um, the car had been parked in front of where the nest was that she had taken the other squirrels to. Um, and Sarah had her cell phone playing that and then, um, she was a little nervous about this and almost immediately she saw a hawk flying, which was like so dramatic. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was just really awful. And she, she called and she was like weeping because there was a, there was the, the crows calling and the hawk flying and the mom wasn't coming. Um, so I said, just hang in there, hang in there. And uh, eventually the mom came down and, and took a squirrel, which was great. And um, she took the squirrels and Sarah kind of wanted to go, it was all over. So she went and got the box. Um, and, and as she's getting the box, the, the squirrel mom comes to her and like, like runs at her as she's getting into her car. And she <laughs> thought she was attacking her. And when, she, when, when Sarah called me and she was really upset about this situation, I said, well, you should have let the mother check the box and, and know that there were no more babies left because that, that was the problem. Oh As someone God. who works with squirrels, uh, it wasn't like she was trying to hurt Sarah. She just thought Sarah was taking more of her babies away. That's crazy. So, That's amazing. That was a great reunite. So, Bill, maybe you should record some of the babies that you that you get and then use that. Or um, we could supply that. Actually, that's something we could do. We could work at Wildcare just to um, record some crying babies because they do all cry when they first come in. That's so true. We should. Yeah. I could share it on Slack. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Um, okay, let's see. What are the most common conditions that increase the chances a squirrel or mouse might nest in your car? Time of year, weather conditions, length of time, car is idle. In other words, under what conditions should you be most diligent in checking? Oh, if you just have your, if your kids gone to college and left their car <laughs> in your in your yard, that's like the most diligent you should be. You should start it. You should move it. You should, um, you know, you should use it. I guess basically, because it's if it's if it seems unsafe, they're not going to use it. And I would think with a squirrel, since mice live a little bit less long and have more babies more often, time might go a bit slower, but um, activity, no food, smell. Um, you know, if it's just sitting there, it's just like a great big empty tree with all kinds of good stuff in it. They love the insulation. They love, it's it's totally, you know, rainproof. It's like a, it's like a four-star hotel for them. They can stash all the food they want. So yeah, activity and smells. They don't like vinegar. Um, vinegar does work. People don't like the smell of vinegar either. People like the smell of mint and, and mice, <laughs> mice don't. But I think activity is, is the main thing. Just like with sheds, people have squirrels nesting in their sheds because all winter long, there's no activity. And then springtime comes and they open up the shed. And, you know, the mother, you know, there's mother squirrel runs out and they close the shed up and then the mother squirrel eats a hole in their shed and, <laughs> and they see that there's babies and they call wild care. We just had a call like that last week and this this um, guy saw the mother leave and he, the, some of the babies had gotten out and he was all upset and he called and I said, well, the best thing to do would just be let them, can they just live there for, you know, until they're ready in, in maybe two months or so. And, and he said, yeah, that's fine with me. <laughs> so it didn't matter to him. So he, he's, so he would be prepared to seal the window that was, you know, that was opened and um, deal with it when the babies are gone. So activity, I think is the main thing, just like a house that's not used. Um, quiet as a mouse. Mice don't like people, but they certainly can live with them when they know the, the quiet places to go. Yeah, so true. And we get a lot of baby mice from auto repair shops. And I'm think <laughs> well, I think we're all thankful they're kind enough to bring them to us, but they're going under a hood. And in those situations, we have no idea because it's not the finder. We don't know like if the car was from Orleans, but Mother Mouse jumped out in Brewster, it's impossible. So we get those orphan, usually in car part boxes. Yeah, um. <laughs> spark plug boxes, water boxes. Um, and sometimes mice have burns or they're like sooty, dirty from being in the car engine. Um, how high should you, this is Kate, how high should you hang a squirrel box? I think ideally, if it's above 10 feet off the ground, um, it would be a squirrel box with four. So a squirrel box to us sometimes just means that we're gonna release a bunch of baby squirrels. But if you were gonna put a squirrel box up um, because you wanted to love the squirrels and give them a place to live, I would say, you know, 16 feet, 12 to 16 feet would probably be good because it's high enough that it's, you know, away from, people activity and that kind of thing. And you should um, consider the branches around it because you don't want to put it right next to a branch that raccoons can just sit on and wait for, um, you know, wait for the squirrels to go in and out. And the boxes that we've modified our boxes in the last few years because of, they're basically just an empty box with a hole, but we have um, raccoons, what they do with, when they want to eat something in a box is they reach in and they grab and grab and grab and they pull it out and they'll eat it. So if they're reaching into a hole like this and there's nothing here, they can just go and grab a squirrel. But if we put these little shelves up about three inches up from the hole, so they'd have to go around and then have to go in like that. And it gives, it gives the squirrels a better chance to bite and grab and um, disrupt what the raccoon's doing. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, okay, so Claire is asking, what about squirrel and mouse birth control? Oh, Stephanie <laughs> should. Okay, so there is there is rat birth control that's out there and viable. I know that Stephanie knows more than I do. And I do know that a few years ago, in some park, I think in California, there was a, a park 
a garden in, in a city that was very over, overpopulated with squirrels and they tried a squirrel birth control and it worked. And I, that was a controlled study of a product that was being tried out. But I don't think there's a squirrel birth control out for people because that, you know, for, for homeowners to do because that it, it isn't that kind of a, an animal problem. Yeah, it's just like a few in your attic, but it's um, but you've talked to the salesman, right, for the company about the birth control. Yes, and um, so so there's a birth control for rats that is now available to the public. You can buy it online. It's um called Contrapest. It's through a company called Senestech, and it's a liquid birth control. And what it does is it sterilizes the rats. It's non hormonal. Um, and supposedly, and this is a fairly new product, but they feel pretty safe saying it doesn't harm the environment, it doesn't harm animals who ingest the rats, who have ingested birth control. Uh, the only thing is, again, it needs to be used like in an integrated way. So if, if you're using birth control for rats, the population is not going to decline immediately. So it helps most effectively if you're doing um, control, you know, like you're, they sell CO2 devices that kill rats, which is far more humane than rodenticides. That combined with birth control, and then eventually, you know, you have this small pop population that can't breed. Um, so just important, it, work, it works, but you have to be persistent with the birth control. And then they're making it for mice. So, which I was kind of excited about. I don't know when that will be ready. I don't know. So. <laughs> we'll, we'll be the first to know. <laughs> and I hope that makes sense. So yes, it's effective. And we usually recommend it because they tell us it's safe, but it's not a quick fix. And it's something that needs to be continually used. And if you want to see a faster decrease in population, you need to combine that with humane, um, lethal control of rats. And you should also be practicing with all of this deterrence and exclusion. Uh, so important. Even when people say they want to use rodenticides, they're not solving the problem because they're killing things quickly. But look at how quickly mice reproduce. You're just going to have the same problems. You need to exclude, deter, eliminate the reasons why the mice are coming and why they're getting in. Um, Oh yeah, and Kirsten and Candy said, very informative, thank you so much. I will try to wrangle some animal loving friends for donations. And Candy nice. just gave us a tiny mouse from Sutton. Oh, that's Candy from Sutton. <laughs> yes, nice. I know, so sweet. Let me see if there are any other questions. But with the mouse control, I mean, I, I once worked for some people who said, Jennifer, where are the mouse mice coming from? They're everywhere. So I just kind of looked around and they had um, a new dryer put in at one point, like two years before, and no one ever covered the hole that was like a six inch hole that went right through their house to the uh -huh. outside. So they had this hole that was just like open door for anything that was bigger than like, you know, smaller than six inches. And that's, you know, sometimes it's really obvious and you're, you will be shocked at how obvious sometimes it is, <laughs> how <laughs> silly you might feel. Um, and Jennifer, we don't have any other questions. Is there anything you wanted to add about rehabbing squirrels, your experience? Well, I'd like to say that um, for people who might find a squirrel, and if you're watching this, then you will know this to tell other people who might call you because they know that you are interested in wild care and know some things. But um, when we ask you not to give any orphan or any animal you find food or water, it's it's really important and people don't understand why. And I have an example of um, there was a, a baby squirrel that was found by people um, in East Ham a few years ago. They, there was a, a dead mother on the road and they heard the screaming in, from a, a nest way up in a tree. It was really high. And they called us and because um, they had found one orphan and they brought that in. And I said, well, eventually, if you hear the screaming, um, the other babies will probably venture down. And it took about five days for this. And, you know, like one after the other came. And uh, these people, you know, I asked them not to feed them. And they, you know, they, they had a couple for a couple of days before they called us because they were collecting them 
to bring them in when they had them. Um, and they gave them bird seed. And those squirrels died because they fed them. And it was like, you know, it was like they, I don't think I even told them, but it was, um, it was really, it's what you want to do. You want to give them food and water, but their bodies just can't digest anything. Their cells aren't working correctly and they have to be, they have to have certain electrolytes and stuff first. So I just kind of want to stress that because it's like, that's just your first urge is to just give it water and give it food. And you think that peanuts eat peanut, um, peanuts, uh, squirrels eat peanut butter because they like peanuts, but that will gag them and it will dry them out. And, you know, anyway, so that, that's something that I think is really important that is hard to resist doing. Yes. I, it, it's so important. Just warmth, warmth and quiet. That's the kindest thing you can do. Um, so Bill, oops, and let me, I see more questions. Eva, the city, the city of Boston has a new way to get rid of troublesome rats. They have a pair of new devices that suffocate rodents with carbon monoxide, which officials said leads to a quick and painless death. What are your thoughts about that? Um, so I know, uh, so there's, you can, in New York also, they've used CO2 to do mass killings of rats. And there's a huge controversy about that. I personally think it is humane. It's far more humane than rodenticides um, because they're putting the carbon monoxide into the burrows and these animals are suffocating. Uh, they're basically dying instantly. Um, however, it's not available for consumers. There's one product available for consumers and it's um, CO2 that is, uh, I'm sorry, it's dry ice and it is by Bell's lab only and it's not available in the state. So, um, and I'm not sure about the devices. I know of the A24 devices, which release a canister, a CO2 canister that um, gives them a, the rats a fatal blow to their head. And those are very humane. Those are at Ace Hardware, right? I Yes, I think you can just purchase them anywhere now. So maybe I'm mixing it up. The new devices that suffocate rodents. I wonder if that's the... So there's the CO2 devices. The rats, they're shaped like this. Mm. The rats have to go up into the, into the device. And then the CO2 releases a blow to their head. And I hate saying this because obviously- So the CO2 is just used for pressure. Just used for pressure. It's not, it's not trying to I wonder suffocate if, them. Exactly. So maybe this is something new that I'm not familiar with. I will look it up. Um, and then the other thing was the dry ice, but people aren't able to, I mean, you can go and buy dry ice and use it, but it's not, it's not legal. It's for use for rodent control in the state and it's dangerous and um you know people can use it to deter like to have to deter animals but if the burrows are sealed up it, it's going to kill them so sorry about that there's a lot of products out there <laughs> a lot of stuff i'll have to look into so that was yeah the a24 i think it's called good nature traps um does anyone have any other questions i think that's it i'm so thrilled great questions thank you everyone for tuning in to hear about rats and mice uh, and <laughs> squirrels um this was awesome and i hope you all have a great evening and this will be available on our youtube channel i will re-record <laughs> the first part <laughs> thanks everyone thank you So how do you remember?